Hello everyone, Nerdlean here and welcome back. Today we're doing a completely different video. We're going to actually talk about the recent posts that the Adine team have released. And I'm just going to say this right now, even though I have had better content with Belfalas, I had no idea about this. This, is, this was completely new information for me. The second this dropped, I knew about it as soon as the rest of you did. So... Why am I talking about this? Well, because they're making a very big change. They're actually going to bring back the free build system for Edine. But it's not going to be the entirety of Edine. This is just going to be another thing, which we're going to go more into later on. But this started off as the typical April 1st post. You know, April Fool's post. They do it every year. It's always funny to see it. I remember the, I remember the year they brought out the Shelob Ring Hero concept and I was laughing my oh I was laughing so much that it just <laughs> oh so funny anyway I'm going to go into uh, reading everything because it is a lot to read but basically they I'm just going to um ab abstract it as much as possible so I don't have to be reading paragraphs or video but I'll also be including my own opinions and um things after reading something just to give you an idea of what I think bringing this system back will do for the Adyne team or for the Adyne mod in general and anything else. So we start with talking about going back. They said that they were going to, um, in, the, in, this, in the April Fool's post, they said they were taking everything back to the free build, free build system. Everything was returning to the way it was back in BFME 2 and Edine 3.8. And um, main thing is the, the difference between the fortress and the citadel. They're not bringing back like the full giant fortresses you used to have in BFME 2 in Rise of the Witch King, even, even Age of the Ring mod. They're keeping it as a small citadel with a few build plots around it, similar to Mordor's um, citadel on a castle start. And obviously the builders are going to be doing the same thing as builders normally do. And these builders are not like the War of the Ring builders that are a one-time use, obviously. They're a use it, you can keep building things with it endlessly. It's just just like in vanilla. And uh, the one thing they are keeping that is a, um, a fixed uh, build are outposts. Outpost flags are still going to be on every map regardless of free build or not free build. Which used to be like inns and signal fires and all that nonsense. It's just going to be kept as the outposts and only unique outposts. So no basic dwarven outpost that has those lines of defences. You can only build Erid Mithrin, Lake Town, Dale, uh, the Border Stronghold, Exile Camp. Uh, yeah, basically all unique outposts that were a, like a single building. And then you could upgrade that one building. That's staying the same. Everything else, though, all the basic outposts that were Citadel, free build plots, they're gone. In the free build system, at least. Which can make certain outposts, like, for example, the Air of Mithrin Bastion, far more valuable because of the fact in free build you can just build around it more easily. And you're not left thinking, okay, this is a very weak, um, poorly defended outpost. We're going to lose this. Nope, you, get to, you can protect it more readily now than you could back in the old system, in the original, in the 4.1 system. And the um, a lot of the faction changes they, they didn't mention in this post, but we'll be talking about that in the main post. But the main things that are changing on the main system to this system, the free build system, are uh, removing economy upgrades. Economy buildings now level up over time. Economy buildings have a radius that impact their resource production. Economy buildings have the ability to man defenses at level 3. Factions start with two builders instead of their starting units. Factions start with a citadel surrounded by four defensive plots instead of a camp or castle. Settlement flags are removed from the game, but builders can also construct all internal and external buildings apart from a few duplicates and outposts, which will be going again in the next uh, post. So, this was all an April Fool's joke, right? So you may, you may think that they just did all of this as a, as a nice little prank for us all. Just to make us believe, for a second, before you realise it's April 1st, oh, this is all just a prank. It's, it's nothing to worry about. 
However, they got the last laugh because even though I thought this was all just a, 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 a very funny, sick joke, as you, as you normally expect from April 1st, they released a second post a few days later. And yes, part one was somewhat of an April Fool's joke, not meant to outright lie to the us. I thought when um, looking at this, I was thought, wait, no, 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 they're not actually doing this, are they? Yes, they are. They're making it so you can, uh, in the um, battle type, you can change it to free build. No more build plots. They're going to make this available for everyone in 4.8. And honestly, that's going to bring a lot of people back that honestly left. I've actually uh, know quite a few people that are very annoyed about the the, um, the fixed plot system. Even though the Dying Mod even, team even say themselves, this is the this the, the current version they have. That's what they want to keep going with primarily, but they're bringing back a free build system that did not exist for a long time. For many, many years, that was gone, and now it's back again. And, uh, yeah, just selecting the game mode um, will make all the changes listed before, so build, uh, economy bunnies will work the same as they used to in, van in vanilla BFME 2, which I honestly don't like. But I understand why they did it. Because um, the, the main beef I have with the old economy upgrade system is that it does upgrade slowly over time. But the slowly over time bar, progression bar, is determined on how many resources are produced during each like tick. So if you're making the 100% the value off that economy building, you're going to get it upgraded very quickly. But if you've got like... 20%, you're, make, you're getting that building upgraded five times slower. And then there's factions like Gondor that have Grand Harvest, which increases the resource production, increases the upgrade speed time. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. Don't quote me on that 100%, but I'm fairly certain that is how it works. It determines it either off purely the percentage that the radius of the, cell, of the, um, the resource building has available, or it generates it off the resources produced, which is why a faction like Isengard with Industry might be able to get a building slightly higher level faster and also fuel the fires for um, other things like lumber mills. Anyway, let's go into the changes that each faction are going to have to um, stable them out a bit when the free build system is active. Firstly, Rohan is going to lose the Rohan farm, the Sud farm and the well. Two external buildings, one internal building because the well is actually... Um, Another building you can get for Rohan, the assembly post, where you can also get uh, Feodred. So, removing the well, but keeping the assembly post as a buildable building is a very nice touch. And obviously the other two buildings are, this is just a, um, a, different, look, a different look to the flower mill you can build in your camps and castles. And the Sud Farm we already have internally, so externally as well doesn't make sense. Isengard has the same thing, removing the external mine shafts. We can now get the Dunlending Huts anywhere and Lumber Mills anywhere, which does offer a bit more value for Lumber Mills in general, but it still doesn't uh, it still doesn't help with the problem of you still don't have ways of generating trees, which is what I mentioned in my How to Improve Isengard video, if you want to go and watch that. But... Uh, but yeah, this might make Isengard a bit more viable compared to the fixed build system because their economy can be very good when everyone else's isn't as strong as well. And Gondor, Arnold, Belfalas, they're all very simple. All the change that really got made to them was the stonemason, stonemaker, whatever you want to call it. They now act a bit more like in Age of the Ring where they just buff buildings nearby. And, uh, yeah, and as it says here, you can see... Uh, they don't upgrade camps and castles. Instead, they uh, provide upgrades to battle towers, repair nearby buildings, and strengthen the citadel and its extensions. What extensions the citadel will get, we don't 100% know. But looking at this, you can see they, there are some walls involved. So they are going to be bringing back um, buildable walls. But something else I noticed, some of these walls look like they could be walked on. And why would they build? How, why would they allow you to make walls so large if they weren't one usable in some way or another, and two, 
what uh, are able to be stood upon and shoot from because that would be a really cool I uh, thing to give. That's why I always never really liked about these thin walls. Yes, you could build them wherever you wanted, but all the all they're used for is blocking off things, and that's what made me such such a turtle player in VF Me Two was just having these walls everywhere, just throwing them down, just turtle and never face the like never struggle with anything. Uh, Mordor. Well, actually has quite a few big changes. Firstly, Mordor Orcs, because of the fact that they can get more barracks everywhere instead of just like one or two in a camp or castle, they're, fit, they're potentially going to change the current three Orcs to Orcs that actually cost resources, which, depending on value, that might, um, that might change. Obviously... In a game where you can get 1,500 command points and you can get, say, five orc barracks all in one location, sat next to each other, pumping out orcs endlessly, you're never really going to lose. But that might not be enough. So they might keep orcs for free, as free as a unit that costs nothing, or they might increase their... Um, Resource product, resource amount, similar to what ha had to happen in BFME two. That is what at the, at the moment they say. We'll, we'll listen to feedback and then see if it's a major balance problem. But apart from that, there's also Saron's influence over the four resource buildings because that used to be the way that they would upgrade to level two permanently and level three permanently for uh, exterior and in internal and external settlement buildings. Now they're going to change it so that it is a once a one-time use level up for those buildings. But after it's been used once, you can't use it on them again and get the same level up immediately after already doing it once. That's not how it works anymore, which makes sense. It's a one-time use build up to have a really good, good economy roll for a time. And if you can keep that roll going, you're going to do really well. But it can also be a very big incentive for your opponents to actually rush down your settlements, which is another thing I don't really like, is the fact that you could just rush down settlement buildings because they're so spread out and you need all those spread out settlements, uh, sp spread out um, resource buildings. As long as I don't put command points on the, set on the resource buildings, I won't mind. As long as they keep the pantries, then that's fine. They haven't mentioned that being changed. I hope it isn't changed. I hope the pantry system remains the same. The dwarves have another uh, system update similar to that with Gondor the Stonemason because of the free build system. There's still a resource building, unlike with Gondor Stonemason or Stone Worker, but also provides but um, provides stacking buffs. It's just a way of buffing battle towers. So it's another version similar to that of Gondor, but more valuable because it also generates resources and gives you other upgrades. Although I think things like Line of the Defense won't matter anymore because um you know no uh, it's all free build again and then Imladris has a few changes with Erister. firstly he's going to be made he's going to be made into a movable character similar to um what he is on horde maps which for those who haven't played horde maps as Imladris, you'll notice when you try to get Erister, you have to bu buy him and then you can just move him around to certain locations i think again if my theory about uh, resource buildings upgrading over time being their produ produce resources, a, li a library spam with Eristor could actually be a really good potential for fast economy rolling because of how much resources Eristor can generate for one building. It's really impressive. But also, the actual library studies... They have removed the, um, the level ups for your resource building. So no more free Iraqian Forge level ups. No more free library level ups. And no more free um, uh, Hobbit farm and uh, just uh, largest farm level ups. Which means that they should probably reduce the cost for all those upgrades as well. Because all they're going to do is be like, um, you, can up you can get your upgrades. You can get more upgrades. You can use your wizards to do more abilities. Wizards are using more abilities. And Dunedain protects the Hobbit farms. And your Mirror ability heals for more. So if they, if they reduce the cost of each of them. That will make more sense. But.
But nah, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that. Now, it, it still feels a bit weird removing so much for um, for one of Imlargis' main mechanics. Then for Angmar, they're um, losing a few things. Mainly their big walls to protect their um, tribute cards going in to, to Angmar's buildings to level them up. But also because the only way to level up your buildings as Angmar is to get those... Little um, little tribute cards into the base, and then giving them to buildings to give them experience. If those buildings are destroyed, then you've lost all that experience. You have to do it, start it all over again. Not sure the chunk of the Iron Crown is going to work with that, but that's something we're going to have to find out when this releases. When it releases, I have no idea when it releases. I've been told nothing about this, but um, because you can build. Um, Exterior, external buildings anywhere with builders, you could probably uh, steamroll even faster than you could when you only had mills and um, smelters in your base and having to build outwards. It can actually give Angmar a more turtle style play, uh, playing me uh, mechanics that actually incentivizes them to play more into the late game faster because of the... Um, because of how tribute carts can be kept in a certain location and then spread out when they need to be. Then the Misty Mountains were already mainly a external free build system with uh, Gundabad and Goblin Town, but for the moment they're saying that they're making it so all the buildings you can normally build, like um, the Goblin Lairs, the Troll Lairs, Warg Lairs, um, all the buildings from the Misty Mountain. All the buildings from Moria, so the the main goblin lair, or whatever it's called, the lair, the loot mine, which redu reduced cost of buildings, which I think would be insane, given that it's now on a free build system. And then the monster cage that you can get from the, your main base are going to be buildings you can build out uh, anywhere. And then the wild lairs um, you can't build yet. They're considering it. They're, they're considering a way to build it up a bit. But I feel at the moment the Wild Lairs and um, Untamed Allegiance powers, Pact of Hatred, are enough for the Wild Lair productions. I don't think that any it, any more changes are needed in that regard. But yeah, Constructors of Wild, they want to find a way to make it that the Wild Lairs can be constructed to be feel organic. But I don't think we really need that, in my opinion anyway. And Lothlorien is actually returning to the 3.8.1 system of the Seeds of the Golden Wood. Where to build your four main buildings that you would normally only build in Lothlorien bases. You can now build anywhere once you have got the Seed of the Golden Wood um, ability on your Citadel. Place it down somewhere and then that building will just build up. I'm not sure how this is going to work with like several Citadels. If you can have several Citadels. It might be you're only allowed one Citadel and that is it. You can't build anymore. You, your builders will have it saying unavailable. Which would be an interesting way of doing it. I believe Age of the Ring has done something like that already. To prevent base spam. So uh, seeing the Edine mod uh, bring that in as well would be very uh, interesting. And then other buildings like Mer Merkwood is going to be is still an outpost. So that would be the same as it always was. But uh, Malon Trees, Bionic Hearts, Entmoots. They could be built, en built anywhere. And um, and actually, that's it. <laughs> that's all the that's all the buildings they can get, unless they can al allow you to build Merkwood buildings everywhere as well. That is going to be another maybe scenario. I don't know at the moment. I'm just going off everything that we have right here. Yeah, the building construct external buildings, resource buildings, and defenses. So it might be that the free buildings you can get from the um, the defensive flats around your. Uh, around a castle, Lothlorien, the statue, um, the lanterns that cause fear, walls even, might be a thing, that's how you get them. And the um, defensive flats, they might allow you to build them as well. It's going to be weird what they do with that, because they might just bring back the 3.8.1 models for defences for Lothlorien. Lothlorien is going to be a weird one, because they, they're so embedded in the um, the fixed build system... That it's going to be, feel really weird seeing it come back as um, what it was in 3.8.1.
but different, if you get what I mean. Because it's not going to be the same. It's not going to be that all those new buildings you build are going to be able to recruit their own units. No, they're still only going to be re recruitable from your citadel. And again, that kind of falls into the theory of you can only have one citadel. You can't have more than one. So in games where you have like eight start locations, but you only had two players, all those extra camps will, will now just be blank slates. You can't build any more citadels. So you're not getting like extra production. You can just have to build over them with resource buildings and take over the map. But it'll be interesting to see what actually happens with all this. I am... Um, overall, my opinion of this is that it is a good idea to do this. I personally um, will try this, see if I like it. And if I don't, I'll just stick, stick to the free build system, the fixed build system. I personally am not a fan of the free build system. As I've made very uh, clear in some of my past videos, ma mainly my Edain Mod vs. Age of the Ring video. Just because the free build system for me was so aggravating. I have terrible OCD. So whenever I want to just build a beautiful base. But also play the game normally. I couldn't do both of those things. I couldn't just build up my beautiful base. Have my perfect army. And then just attack the enemy and win. That's not how BFME works. You have, you have to fight tooth and nail for every bit of land. And if you're not paying attention to things going on around you. You can lose all those settlements that are producing you money and not even notice it when it, in base Edine with camps and castles, those buildings are all protected in that one location. And you know if something's coming towards that location because the vision from that one location is very broad. But if you're pr expanding out because you've got no space to keep building these resource buildings, you're going to keep having to go micromanage everywhere. And then you, you suddenly notice, oh, Five of my resource bones over there are now all gone and I'm making no money. But that's all um, spe uh, my personal uh, experience with this game anyway in uh, the free build system. But um, but yeah, I do know quite a few people that will be happy to see this. Um, and that's why I kind of want to uh, broadcast it to anyone that doesn't read the um, Edine Mod Mod DB pages. Who doesn't is not part of the Edine Mod Discord, and just doesn't um, look look at any of this stuff in general because this could make you change your mind on whether or not you come back to this the, this mod or not. I think it will it will it will bring back a lot of people. This will bring back a lot of people, but it's not going to be the main re the main thing of this game. All this that's coming back is just a new experience on top of the experience we already have which is the fixed build system bringing in the new faction Belfalas which I'm very excited for and I'm willing to excited to see what changes they make to what they've already got and uh, it'll be interesting to actually see because I know there are quite a few maps that actually would get more value out of the free build system than the fixed build system some maps are not that way some maps are like really small and compact are actually better with the fixed build system where larger, more dominating maps where you can build so much and keep building up layer by layer. That is more for the free build system. And in fact, I believe this map here is for Linden, the uh, the giant like um, corner size map, which has a little bit of a um, an ocean. A little, little lake which you can send ships over and then there's a small island in the bottom left corner which you can then uh, build out to and as well i think that's on this on that that on that map and yeah that that map is probably one of the best for free building because of how far each base is from each other you can just keep building out to then come up to attack the enemy straight in the face but yeah there's so many things that are um so many questions that are left unanswered with this. First, my, my big thing is, what can these expansion plots build? Can they build walls? Can they build towers? Can they build catapults? Can they build bonus exterior buildings that only certain factions have? Like, Gon um, not Gondor, Enlargers' uh, water fountains that release the water horses. 
The old Isengard um, mind charges would be interesting to see if that came back. Mordor's fear statues, I imagine, will already be, still be a thing. But yeah, that it's, it's a lot of things to think about all at once. I just want to um, see all of your guys' opinions on this. Do you like this idea? Do you think this is what will bring you back to the Adama if you're currently playing Age of the Ring? Is, um, is this going to mean absolutely nothing to you and you'll just keep continue playing the fixed build system because you're like me and you prefer the fixed build system it this this, this has opened so much i was actually gobsmacked when i first saw this and um i'd be very interested to um to see how this all works when it all comes out i imagine there's going to be at least two or three more posts going over all the extra fleshed out details that they're going to release for this um, this new system for 4.8. And uh, if I am given a beta version to test this free build system out, I will. But at the moment, I do not have it. I double checked my current beta version. I don't have it. I only have Belfalas. That is all, that is um, that's the, the honest truth. I'm not being told. I'm not being held under NDA to not reveal this or any specific information. I'm not being t I've not been messaged anymore by anyone saying, "Oh, don't say anything about this or this or this because this might change or this is not happening, etc., etc." There's so much this can bring to the Dime mod. I want to I just want to make sure that everyone can enjoy this mod as much as I do, and I really hope that. Um, me showing this has actually helped some of you who haven't seen this already get hyped for this mod again and may even pick it up again because this this is a very fun mod. Anyone that enjoys the fixed build system but also likes a bit of free build should come and play this mod and get ready for 4.8. I don't know when it's going to be released. All I know is the base version I have is already very good. Obviously a few bugs, but that's nothing new. But, um, but yeah, I'm going to leave that off there. Just saying, uh, yeah, free build. It's coming back. Is it going to be worth it? <laughs> Let's find out. Hope you've all in, um, learned something and enjoyed. And I'll see you all in the next one. Farewell.